in a very strict sense of the word, a nonviolence is the science of government. Um, how do you solve social problems without compromising yourself, violating other people, or violating properties of other people? Now, Jesus laid that principle down as a, as a principle. However, nobody followed through. That is, his motion that was second until Gandhi came along. And after Jesus' principle was clarified by Tolstoy, in the kingdom of God is within you, Gandhi then took it and uh, applied it, first to South Africa and then to India's liberation. That this principle carried out to its logical conclusion would solve the social problem. First, because it identifies the problem. Then it defines the problem. And what happens when you define a social problem if it's your problem, if the problem is bothering you, then you have a contribution to that problem. And that's the difficult thing, the reason why most people don't get into nonviolence, because you trace the problem back to yourself, at least an aspect of the problem. Then what you have to do is take your investment out of the problem, see, through confessing and repenting. Then you forgive others and don't judge others who themselves have investments in the problem. This process causes you to start going back to the original cause of the problem. It's called due process. So you confess, repent, forgive, and not judge. Then you go to another level of seeing another aspect of the problem. At this time, you have objectified the problem and you're not antagonistic toward yourself. You're not guilt-ridden are hostile towards the others for being engaged in a problem because the problem came about as a, as a result of information not known or error made not corrected. So then when you get back to the cause of the problem, you formulate a plausible solution. And you begin then to dialogue toward a solution by asking questions, getting answers, making decisions, doing work. And you continue to do that until you come up with the solution. And so you solve all problems without even the thought of injuring people. So you don't see enemies at that point, you see problems. If you go back to our declaration, which says, well, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. The right of life is the first. So obviously a government wouldn't take life, see? So if, if an agency is taking life, is, you know it's not a government yet. It, it's, 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 it's standing in for a government, and it, it will probably function until someone come along with government. But what is lacking is government, because it's a definite thing. The way by which we govern ourselves uh, individually and collectively to serve all of our health interests, rights, and needs. And, and in doing that, you never would violate people. So he says to me, he said, well, I think a man should serve his nation, but I don't think he should kill people. So I'm not going to get into this shooting and stuff, but I'll cook for people. And uh, so he handed me a book, The Kingdom of God is Within You, by Leo Tolstoy. And when I read the book, what, the, what Tolstoy says essentially is this, that at the moment you function beneath the principle advocated by Jesus Christ, you are unconscious and you're outside of the, the religion of Jesus Christ. Well. Uh, my misfortune is this. I'm not as fortunate as a lot of people. I really do know when I don't love and respect people, and I really do know when I'm telling lies. Now, I didn't know anything about Mahatma Gandhi at that point, and I didn't really know the whole life of Leo Tolstoy at that point. I never studied his history. I just studied the book. I had read the book. And then I found out that Gandhi had read that book, and that's how he started his movements when I got into Nashville and started studying theology and how do you change things, that I was introduced to Gandhi and then discovered that Gandhi had also read The Kingdom of God is Within You. In fact, his, his first uh, ashram that he set up in South Africa was named the Tolstoy Farm. That this principle, that the Sermon on the Mount, is a principle by which you can live and, in fact, if when you really get into it in a, at a deep level, it is the, the gospel of Christ that really gave birth to America. And so it's like 
it's the constitutional uh, uh, outgrowth of that theology. And so that's how I came to understand it. Miles Horton, somebody you should really study and look into. Miles Horton went to Union Seminary and went to University of Chicago. He's the first from his family in Appalachia that went to college. And he was a, a hillbilly. And he organized in the, the European Appalachia people and developed this knowledge on, and he went to Denmark and studied also, that the knowledge to solve a problem is in the people. But you got to get the people to dialogue and start thinking about it and working on it. And then after he had helped the Appalachia people, his thinking was that, well, this knowledge can be applied to anybody. It certainly could help black people in that situation. So then he started opening his workshops. He always, the school was always open to all people, but then he started focusing on helping to develop leadership. And in fact, Rosa Parks went to the school a month or so before she set in. Our position was, if you take nonviolence and apply it, it will solve the problem, and therefore you're going to do what, you, what your vocation called for you to do. And, uh, because after 1960, in about two months, we had opened the city. So it was like, no, this does work, so we should apply this. It, it, it gives you a tool, you don't have to be hiding and lying, and it brings dignity, it allows everybody to participate. Uh, it creates a context where there's real dialogue and real thinking through problems, and it, this should be used and it can be used. You simply have to be tough enough to be honest enough to stick with it. Not only uh, would we end segregation at lunch counters, we would take this principle and end every vestige of racial segregation because, first of all, it was anti-human, anti-Christian, and un unconstitutional. So it's like, no, we don't have to go along with this. And as a way that we can heal ourselves of our fears and we can help heal our European brothers of their hatred because this fear and hate is not allowing real work to go on. And I have to get rid of my fear before I can even address this guy on his hate. And if I get rid of my fear, that's an element out of the problem. Then with love, I can address the problem. And, and, and so we decided that we would address all of these problems and so in the process of doing that, Dr. King asked me to uh, uh, work with him. Uh, but he, you have to understand that he was also the person that actually set up SNCC because his idea was that all you students should come together and work together. And then he allowed his executive secretary, Ms. Ella Baker, uh, to go on leave to do that. And he supported that. And he simply said to us that what you guys should do you could be a member of my organization, that's fine, or whatever, but you should absolutely make sure that you use the principle of nonviolence. We, we, we are the people. We the people. See, when you, when you come in the position, our father, your next move is we the people. So you help your brother to see an aspect of himself that is hid from himself. Not for the purpose of embarrassing him or busting him out, but so he can see something that he had not heretofore seen and give him time to work on it. I mean, you need to work on that. I know about that. I know about hate. And I know how it blocks you and keeps you from seeing, make you think some of other people that ain't true. You know, so, so that's how nonviolence works. It is, a, it is a clinical educational process that you apply to the sociology. See, he was like Lincoln. He saw, you can't save... You, you, you got to do two things at the same time. Save America and free black people. A free black folk can save America. You got to do both of these things. And both of these things are important. And you got to love both of these things. You got to love black folk and you got to love America. And he did. Um, and um, so he was like, I would say, an authentic Christian minister. So he really did bring the Christ spirit. So what, what, what you was dealing with was a, the Christ spirit. King honestly loved people. He, he wasn't playing a role of playing like he loved American people. King loved the American people. King loved the American system of government. 